flu. Because there's a lot to talk about here because it's about forgiveness. And I'm going to talk about it. And I ask that you participate too if you can. First, uh, 18, uh, chapter, uh, excuse me, I'm on the wrong subject. Uh, Luke 15, 11, the first one says, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the young of them said to his father, give me the portion of good that followed to me. And he divided it to them his living, verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took a journey to a far country and there wasted his substance with riders living. All right, someone talk to me. When, uh, I, I did, did good to him. The youngest, the youngest son, he wanted his portion of what his father was had promised him. The thing was, he didn't want to wait until the father died. He wanted his way now, straight up. And when he got it, he just went out to a poor country. He just loaded it up. I mean, he, he just wanted to live around here, he wanted to live there, extract his life and everything because he figured the money was going to last forever, but it didn't. So the money ran out. He didn't have anything. Amen. But he wanted his portion because Amen. he thought he was third. He wanted, he, if, he figured, if, he, if, if he waited until his father died, he wasn't going to get all his money. So he figured he was going to keep going years now. Amen. Very good point from Deacon uh, Cunningham. The younger son could not wait. Traditions are that you wait to get your inheritance. Someone has to die. So in essence, what the youngest son was saying, I wish you would be. Because I need my money right now. And as Dick Cunningham said, what he did is he went out. And if you ever notice that all your adults around here, when you got money, you got plenty of friends. When your money run out, they see your when they see your name on the call ID, they know you need some help, they won't ask you. Any more comments before we go any further? I've had friends like that, you know, I helped out me, I didn't have no money. They and my car broke down, they didn't want to give me a ride because it was gonna cost them 30 minutes sleep. That's, that's the type of world we live in. But you know, God is not that way. Amen. Not that way. <clears throat> oh, any comments on uh, verse 11, 12, or 13 before we move any further? Verse 14 said, it said, when he had spent all, there rose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Mm -hmm. And when sometimes the Lord will get your attention. Amen. Now, first of all, you know, he decided his, his dad didn't have to give him his inheritance. He, he didn't have to do that. But he did it. But sometimes when we do things, the Lord, you have to hit rock bottom. When I say rock bottom, I mean maybe you got two dollars in the bank. That's it. Now you have no choice. And you're gonna see what happened to the prodigal son. The prodigal son went out and we caught party on the town with all this money buying everybody everything and everybody loved and beat them up. Oh, you're such a great person, this and that, and bam. No more money, I don't need you. Does that remind you of someone? Anyone got a comment on verse 14? Deacon uh, Mary kind of, he must be back there working on something. Amen. You know, it, it shows how it says that after that when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to want. You spent everything you had. Everything. And now all of a sudden everything is going wrong. And now you're in want, you're in need because you wasn't conservative, you wasn't frugal over what was over your inheritance. Now this was bound to happen anyway because he he took the inheritance and and in a bad state of mind anyway. 
right? So we knew this was going to happen. But when you look at that and you start to see and you apply it to our, our lives today is that if we take for granted something that somebody has given us, and we usually do, right? Because when someone gives you something, you squander it a lot faster than if you had earned it. Right? And so you see here that when that starts to happen, downfall accompanies that. And all of a sudden you don't have anything else. And now all you can do is want for something else because you you squandered it. Uh, I I like what I get what you think. I like what Dick and Murray had to say that when you squander everything, you don't have anything left. Crazy. Nothing. Deacon cut in. Yeah, I, I was looking at this. I'm thinking the father probably just gave him his inheritance when he asked the father for it. He just gave it to him because he probably wanted to teach him a lesson and let him see. You know, once you don't have anything left, then you don't be able to creep. That's what it looked like happened to him. So he just gave him his money and said, okay, do out there. And uh, do your thing. I man, I I've read it, but I, you know, we we gotta wait till we get a little further than less. But sometimes we pretty much know the outcome of things that we let our children do. But sometimes you have to learn for yourself. And we, as we get deeper into the lessons, you can get a better understanding of what the father said. And he, uh, Pastor Brown, we're on verse 14 in Luke 15. Okay. Did you guys talk about divided unto them? In verse 12. Well, we did talk about it. Yeah. Them, not, not just him, but them. So he, 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 the father had to give out portions to more than just his, his son that went away. So the Bible says right there, verse 12. Praise the Lord, everybody. Sorry. He says, he says, mm -hmm. he says, portion of goods that fall, and he divided unto them his living. So that means that he, he, I'm going to tell you two things that I think. This is just me thinking. thinking as, as the mind of a father, he gave some to all his sons. This was just left. But I don't believe he gave, gave all of it to him. Amen. Good point. <laughs> because you already know what he's going to, like you said, you, you already know what he's going to do with it. Yeah. So he gave him just enough, you know, and then give him just enough to mess up. Yeah, no, he gave him like third of those. Yeah, but he didn't give it all to him. So, so, so he gave him just enough to see what he's going to do so, so, so he can show the son where the sun was at. Mm -hmm. God does that to us. You know, God will give us something. We pray, 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 Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And the Lord will give it to you. And, 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 and you mess it up. <laughs> you mess it up. And, 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 and by, just like, like, like the story here, we lose that, but God takes us back. Okay. Amen. Well, thanks for those comments from my pastor, Sam. <laughs> He, he gave him and just enough. And so I remember when I was young, sometimes parents would give kids money and just to see how they would handle that money. Not a lot back in the day, but in both parts, like Deacon Mary said earlier, that was one of my things. If you don't work for it, you will squander it. Amen. Because your back is not hurting, your legs are not hurting. All you just look at is that, look what I have here. Right. But like my son, they always wanted them Jordan shoes. It was fine until they got a job. Then they didn't want to buy them. <laughs> fifty dollars now. It was, it was, okay, so when you're working, it's a different story. When you're spending someone else's money, you have the tendency to not have any regard for it. Amen. Amen. Any any comments before we go to verse 15? <laughs> verse 15 is really good. It said, he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. He sent him into his field to feed swine. Okay. Now, somebody need to talk to me on this. Okay. I was hoping someone else. Deacon Mary. Okay. Amen. I'll talk. Amen. You know, it's it's amazing. So when you read this, right, you, you read and he went and joined himself. So you understand that he's talking about himself. And then it says and he sent him into the fields to feed. He's talking with the writer here. Is, Luke is talking about him, the, the prodigal son. Yeah. Again, he sent himself because when you read through the lesson, you 
you, you find out that one, he adapted to where he was. He just kind of said, man, I'm here now. I got to do something. I got to eat. So he went and found him a job. And the job that he found was a job that uh, nobody wanted. And that's where, you know, we, we get there. And he's in the fields now. Now, mind you, he comes from a wealthy family. All right. He comes from a wealthy family. And, and I would surmise that some pride set in at that point in time. It's like, do I go back home to my dad and, and get some more and ask for more and go back home begging? Or do I try to figure this thing out by myself? Apply that to our lives right now. Why are we so afraid to go back and ask for help? We know where our help comes from, but yet we refuse to do it. And then we try to figure out things on our own. And then we end up in a bad situation like we're about to talk about here. Yeah. And so when we get to the swine, thank you, Deacon. When we get to the swine, uh, you know, we get a little bit into clean and unclean. And so we're not, she's not supposed to be messing with anything unclean. And so now this is like Deacon Murray said, this is how low things is, how bad things have gotten for him. And it's going to get, it gets a little worse. But the God will get your attention. Now we're not even supposed to be around him. We're not supposed to touch it. And so now this is where he's going to be working. You know, that's what the, that's what the adversary do for two of us. You know, when we uh, put ourselves in a position to venture out on our own from the things of the Lord, it seems like we always find ourselves in a position we really don't want to be. Somehow, something in a relationship, living someplace, uh, a job, uh, something, something that someplace or somehow he likes to position, the enemy tries to position us uh, in a place that is totally contradictory to where, what my upbringing and what my principles are try to break us. And that's his job. His job is try to break us. Break us from believing what we were doing, what we, how we were brought up. And, you know, this young man still had enough. We find that, but even though this is what his position was, the situation was, you know, God was still, God was, hand was still on him. God's hand was still on him. And I think about what Deacon Murray said. He said, you know, pride sets in. Amen. Pride sets in, and even in the church, a lot of people don't want to take help. Certain people are certain ways because they think there's a there's a hidden agenda. And with the church, with the hidden the agenda with the church, that they the church wants to see the same. Right? That's what the church should be. You know, Amen. we help you try to make sure that you make it to heaven. But if you deal with people, there's usually an agenda behind it. They're trying to help you some way, shape, or form. So that's why a lot of people don't like to take help. But always remember, you know. The church should be able to help us in order to be saved, make our our call and election sure. Amen. I want to thank Pastor for those comments. Anyone else have a comment? Okay, our verse 16 said that he would fain have filled his belly with the hunt that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. When you when all of these people that he was uh, partying <laughs> with would not give him anything, mm. and I know people like that. I remember that, like the Sunday school lesson, where they, where they, where they, <clears throat> one one person forgave the other person, but the other one didn't want to forgive him. Next man come along. So I call it. Uh, I was in the Marine Corps, we said uh, supper pie, I always call it supper eye. <laughs> because there's a lot of selfish that goes on. And that's what happened. He probably couldn't understand. Hey, look, you know, I used to take care of you all, help you, uh, do things for you. And now you all don't want to have anything to do with me. And I like what Pastor Brown said. Sometimes when we wander off, uh, it, it ends in disaster. I have seen so many people run away from home and it ends in disaster. Now what's happening now is a human trafficking. It's all something bad. And some places you don't have to run away from home. When you get 18, they put you out the house. Mm -hmm. They yeah. tell you it's time to go. Yes, sir. But this is not the case in this Sunday school lesson. Any comments on 16? 
Number 17 said, and when he came to himself, after he hit rock bottom, he said, how many high servants that my father have bred enough and despair, and I perish with hunger. Mm. Now he started to remember how his servant ate. And he said his servant ate was eating better than him. Like uh, Deacon Murray said, that he came from a wealthy family. Mm -hmm. And so as he sat there and he was working hard and, and people wouldn't give him nothing, he was trying to make ends meet, he started to remember start to think about, about how things were back home. How good it was, how, how foolish I was to leave. Any comment on 17? Deacon Cunningham. Yeah, Brody. Uh, like you said, that pride had set in. He didn't want to give in. He didn't want to go back home and, and let his father see how bad he was living. But when, and once, once he went in the field and started having to eat with the swine, and start thinking about the service and all, that pride was slow to leave. He was slow to get himself together to go back home and, 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 and let the father know where that go. He absolutely says the pride would think a deacon cutting up says the pride settles in. You can, you, if you watch like some of the shows with the homeless, a lot of them ran away. Some of them ran away and the pride settled in. They don't want to go back home because they, don't want to portray, be portrayed as a failure. Right. And so that's when disaster comes in. You know, all kind, you run into all kind of uh, wicked people. But I'll tell you I how bad it was for me. And I and I and I, I my pride to never get in the way. My mother passed away, we didn't have no food to eat. I used to go to school and ask people if I could have whatever they had on their tray. I didn't care. I didn't care who thought, what they thought. I was hungry. People won't do that. They pass. People, people won't do that. They won't ask for uh, stuff at the food bank. One lady, I was going to get her some food for the food bank, but she didn't want to put her information down. You know, she just wanted me to go get it and give it to her. And I said, hey, we're not going to use that. It's got to account for it. She said, oh, no. She said, I don't want everybody to know I got this from the food bank. You read some dark pride. Uh, we're on verse uh, uh, 17, uh, Deacon Mary, if you have anything. Verse 18 is a really good one. I know everyone here can talk about this. He said, I will rise and go to my father. Uh uh. And will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And before thee. So when he's telling them now, he realized it is time to go back home. But he's talking about I have sinned against heaven. He's talking about I've sinned against God. Amen. And before thee. So he had enough pride to realize that he had hit rock bottom. And if you don't have any money in the bank, no food, and the only thing you have. Is water in a pitcher you have here, rock bottom. <laughs> and you have to have the pride that, that let your pride go and go and ask for help. Go up to the food bank. Nothing wrong with it. It's there for everyone, but some people won't use the food bank. Amen. Any comments? Deacon uh, Murray. Yeah, I, I want to go a different route with it because you say he hit rock bottom and you are 1000% correct. But what I also see here is that, again, looking at our own lives, I remember what I was before I came to Christ. And so I'm thankful that the Lord continued to have mercy on my life so that I could get it right. And so I look at this situation here. Yeah, he definitely hit, hit rock bottom because he could have went another way. And so I can only imagine him being thankful and being grateful that he, if you will, he came to him to his senses of knowing what he was supposed to do and what he was taught all along. And so he was getting back to it because there are instances in our lives that we see every day in our families, our friends, even celebrities, right? They, they know which way to go, but then they make a decision they make a choice to go 
another route and they never make it back. Amen. You know, thank you very much, uh, Deacon uh, Mary. You know what, as I also was thinking that when he was going back, decided to go back home, he didn't know if he would be accepted back. True. He didn't know that. But it's gotten that bad. It's worth to, worth the chance to take it, to go back and try to see it because after all, he had to ask his dad for all his inheritance. He couldn't work. And like I said, uh, basically, the inheritance comes when you are uh, deceased. But basically, you're saying, you know, I, you know, you've been living too long. I wish you were dead. So we see people do it all the time with insurance policy. They, they get these big insurance policies and they think someone's going to die in a few years. And they don't die. They say, well, I, let me help you. What? Let me help you right along here. <laughs> Let me help you. Yeah. <laughs> help us, Lord. Any, any comments on? And verse 19 said, I am no more worthy to be called thy son and make me as one of thy, uh, one of thy hired servants. Verse 20 says that he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And if you're reading it, if y'all have read the Sunday school lesson, you know how the older son felt about this. Right. So as I was reading it, it said that the father was forgiven. Him. So let's break it down now. So he's like, God forgiving us. Right. Amen. The son was like the youngest son was the church, which he forgives us. And so, and when we get to the oldest son, he, you, you, he displayed as something else. But what we were showing is even the last two lessons that God always forgives us. Amen. Right. Then we have someone that does not want to forgive. And if he wouldn't have forgave us, say Pastor Brown said that we would all be consumed. Yes, sir. Amen. But he forgave us, and now we don't want to forgive nobody. Holding 30 year grudges. Come on now. Any comments on Deacon? <laughs> Y'all don't want to talk. I'm going to talk this morning. Yeah. I'm tired of my body, but I feel good. Yeah, we talk about Jesus. You know, it's, a, it's amazing how we look up and see verse 18 and 19. He was talking to himself. He was talking to the Lord. He, he, it was almost as though he was rehearsing, right, what he might say to his dad. But he was he was he was he was praying, Lord, help basically help me. And, and I've sinned against you. But then you see here when you, when, when you get down to 20 and 21. When he actually physically was able to do this. Like you said, the compassion of his father, but then literally right after that, then he said to his father the same words he said to the Lord, basically, to say that he was not worthy and he had sinned against God. You know, and so here we see another example of, of just being humbled in a situation, him being humbled, not realizing or not knowing if his father was going to accept him back. And his father, look what his father did. He kissed him, he just hugged, it was just. Thank God you're back. So again, I'm just looking at this lesson as, as a life lesson to us. No matter what we've done, no matter what we've said to people, no matter what, if there's still breath in our bodies, we still have an opportunity to repent to God, be saved, get baptized in Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost, and he still will accept us back. Amen. 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 Regardless, speaking, uh, Mary, regardless of what we have done, he will accept us back. And I think we were talking about that on the on the ride up to New York yesterday. Mm -hmm. He'll take a prostitute. He'll take a bank robber back. He'll take a murderer back. Yes, and so, uh, are you ready to forgive? That's the question. Pastor Brown. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that his father was wealthy and well-known in the country where he was or wherever he was at. His father probably knew exactly what the situation was, right? His father probably knew exactly that he had Wasted all his money because all his wealthy friends probably say, Hey, man, your son's over here, you know, living, <laughs> living like this. He's like, well, you gotta let him be for a minute. 
being mixed up with the citizen of the country. I'm pretty sure the father had some some idea of what the situation was. And you know, it is says, did we do verse 20 already? Yes. Yes, we did. So I think the father knew that he was just about where he needed to be. And you know, and I think the father was looking for him. But I think I think the Lord does the same for us. You know, he's even though we go through these situations, you know, um he's looking for us. You know, to come on back home. Amen. He's looking for us to come on back home because why would the father see him a great far off? Yeah, if he wasn't in, if he wasn't positioned in a place to see, you know, how he was coming. You know what I'm saying? Amen. How, how he was he was, so it gives that gives us intent. That gives us an intent or in, insight to the mind of the father. That the father was, you know, my son, he bowed his wits in. Hopefully he'll get some sense about himself. Maybe, you know, come on back. <laughs> and when he comes back, I'm gonna greet him um with loving kindness and the Bible says he had compassion on him and ran. You see that? And ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Praise the Lord. And watch this. He hadn't had a shower. <laughs> his clothes were not of appropriate attire. He had all that living on him, but yet the father embraced him. And that tells us right there, like I said yesterday, too many times people are trying to fix their, fix their situations before they come to God instead of coming to the Lord and allowing him to help them through their situation. So, so a lot of people want, oh, I'm not ready to come to God. I got to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Well, 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 you can't do that without the Lord. We got to do this. The Lord's going to help us, and that's why we got to do what Paul tells us to do: cast all our cares. I might be here. Cast all our cares upon Him, for He cares for us. Instead of trying to fix our situation, let's bring our situations to the Lord, and that's got it. So walk through those situations with us. Amen. I like those uh, remarks and comments from Pastor. Like you said that. As I'm reading, he was a far off. That means he could recognize it. Right. He recognized it. He recognized it. And as I was looking also, he looked forward to his son coming back. And, you know, and he was pretty much out every day looking. Right. And this one day, he said, that's my son. And so the natural response from the devil is, you're not one of mine. Right. You you know, you took my money, you squandered it, but none of that ever came up. That right. none of that ever came up. And that's the type of God saying. And so in verse 21, it said, His son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in this thy sight, and I am no worthy, no more worthy to be called thy son. He felt sometimes we do things that we are not happy with what we did. And I think, Pastor Preacher, sometimes you do things that you said, "What? why did I do that? Yes, sir. You know, what was I thinking? And his, he said that he was no better than a servant, and he was not even worthy to be his son. That's a lot. But... We see so far, as we said in verse 20, the father didn't see it that way. God doesn't see it that way when we do things that look like that unforgivable. Mm -hmm. He forgives us. Just don't do it no more. Yes, sir. 22. Oh, did you cut a hand? Yeah, also, the father didn't know. His door was always open. He can always come back home. It's the same thing like in the church. When you leave the church, you go out there and you backslide. The church doors are always open. You can always come back to the church and that's when you get reformed. So, Man, I like that from Deacon Cunningham. Deacon Cunningham said he has an open door policy. Yes, sir. That you can always come back. And it says you can go out there and come back because we can make mistakes of the devil. And entice you in all kind of ways with money, all kind of things that look pretty. Just so pretty that you couldn't believe it. Jesus, just I, I gotta do this. 
and take you right out of the church. Yes, sir. Stop you reading the Bible. Stop you doing a whole lot of things. You start making excuses for it. But you can come back and get it right. You can come back and get it right. And I thank God for a uh, God that forgives us. Amen. I know the world, not all, they are not forgiven. Yes, sir. I knew someone that held a grudge for 30 years, never talked to his brothers for 30 years, uh, wrote him a letter every Christmas, but he had no return address so he could know where that, that was foolish. Mm. But that was a grudge. <laughs> Whatever he had done, he never forgave him for it. And I think he says that in, the, in, the, in Matthew, he says, I think in, the, in chapter five, he talked about that if you have a disagreement with your brother, oh, Pastor yeah. Brown talked, I think he preached about it, don't bring your offering until you get it right. Get it right. Amen. And that's what he's selling us. And so we can't go to sleep uh, upset with someone that owes us some money. And, 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 you know, if you get too upset, you start dreaming how you're going to get them. That's a whole lot of murders are committed in the green thing. Okay, I figured it out. This is what I'll do. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and forgive them. I like what Pastor Brown said when we come into the close. He said, don't don't loan saints money. You might not get it back. Amen. So, you know, if it's going to cause a division, uh, you know, if you can't afford to lose it, then don't do it. So you may not get it back. For sure with family members. My family members, they that when I was in the military, they just looked at me. My sister told me at the time I wanted some money. All I had to do go to the base and tell them I was broke. I said, really? <laughs> but they thought I was rich. Mm -hmm. So whenever I did something for them, they were like, okay, I'm not going to pay you back. So it just <laughs> came to where, okay, I got to deal with you in certain aspect ways. Because, <laughs> you know, I'll be bankrupt here in a couple of years messing with y'all. But that's what the pastor was saying. And so we, we can't hold grudges. If you know that someone that you're going to do something financially, if they don't get it back, don't let it cost you your salvation. That's right. Okay, we got... Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Dutton. Today, man. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Well, this is an example, actually. Men of God, last year, loaned, loaned me money. And I know you. I'll get it. I'll get it one one day. But just take your time. And he said, just communicate. You know, that's the main thing. Communication. He's like, yeah. I say, I don't have this. That's okay. Just like you were talking about. He had compassion for me. He's like, you get it. I'll get it when I get. It, you know, just yeah. keep on working at. It, you know. Yeah. So that that means that there's good people in this world. You know, yeah, there's some good people in this world. Yeah. You know, so you just got to find them. A lot of good people, like you said, compassion. We always, I always look at God. He gets compassion on us. Uh, some of the things that we've done, he, he gave us compassion. And so we have to remember how people treated us. Our people money didn't have. But I did tell them I didn't have it. But, you know, some people, they, they are not that. As patience, something. But the best thing to do is, like I said, if you could, if you loan money as a Christian, uh, you get it back, you get it back. But don't let it cost you your salvation. Mm -hmm. And stop talking to them and the song, song say, and, and it, it's not worth it. Any more comments before we go? Now, verse twenty-two. But the father said to his servant, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Yes, and I was reading it said the servants didn't have shoes. They, they normally barefoot. Right. And, and when they uh, <laughs> and so he had already in my opinion look for the return of his son and he would go to celebrate this is what we call a celebration a, a celebration where it bring be the best role right and put it on him 
Now, like we said earlier, the son did not know how this was going to turn out. You know, he done ran off and squandered his dad's money, and now he's coming back. And so this is the way God does us. We done ran off and did all these things, and he still takes us back. Man. And so verse 24, 23 says, And bring him the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat. And be married. And I was reading it said the fatty calves were used for especially like the, the feces. So he just didn't do that. So here we see that even though his son didn't do everything he wanted, he accepted him back and he provided the best for him. And that reminds you of somebody? Deacon Cunningham. No, it's just I was just listening to what you said. The father accepted him back. I mean, he brought out the best room he did. Put the best room on the table. He put the best shoes on his feet, and he didn't even worry about how his, how his son was. He just accepted his son, like the doctor said. He had all that living on him. He didn't take no bath or anything. The father just grabbed his son and hugged him. Put the best clothes on that he did. He just hugged his son. So that's a good father. That's a good father. That's how I got heavenly father, right? He accepts us back, and we might not think that we're worthy to be accepted back for what we've done. But he does it all the time. But we need to do that too. Any more comments? Okay. Well, verse 24 said, and he closes out, he said, For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and it began to be merry. So I was reading it like the lost and found. So sometimes when you lose stuff, you go to the lost and found, like when you were in school, you go to the lost and found and <laughs> see if anyone else turned it in. Right. But the father was said, how joyous and let us be merry that my son is now, I found him. And so, so many, uh, uh, that's what, uh, the, <clears throat> that's what the Lord does for us. That when we do things and we sometimes we'll leave the church and get mad at the preacher, get mad at the praise team, get mad at somebody, get mad at everybody. <clears throat> and then we realize that that was not the right thing to do. And you, you know, the Lord break your heart, you say, Well, you know, I need to go back and repent <clears throat> and get back in the church. I like what. Uh, Bishop uh, Spinks always said, if you jump from church to church, you're going to find out the same problem that you left your church with in the other church. Amen. So you, <laughs> you, you're you looking for a perfect church, you're not going to find it. Okay. And we want to be perfect, but it, it's nothing but one perfect person. So nothing is perfect. So if you have a disagreement, then you still stay in the church. I don't believe in shifting jobs. I don't believe in shifting churches. I don't believe in none of that. And I stay here until it's all over with. That's probably why I'm here. I don't go jump to this church and that church. And I run out of churches to run to. Okay. Speaking of. Yeah, I was where, just, you know, you guys know I don't mind being transparent. I'm just thinking about something that happened with me and my son about 10 years ago. And uh, uh, he did something incredibly stupid he's living in minnesota we we were living here he drove from minnesota to new york city with no insurance on his car literally from minnesota to new york gets to new york gets in trouble with the law ends up getting locked up and the first thing he said to the family do not call my father <laughs> do not call my father just just let it go I'll deal with it. Don't call my father. Long story short, he gets he gets out. And of course, my wife is like, come on down here. Come on, come on to Virginia. Just come down and we'll give you some money. We'll get your car insured and just that and the third, you know, whatever it was. He gets to Virginia and he didn't, he couldn't look me in my face. And he didn't want to talk to me. He didn't want to come in the house. None of that. So I go over to him and I just give him a hug. As we you know, and I took to this day, he's 32, turning about to turn 32 years old. And when I see him, I still kiss him on his head. I I, I hug him and all and all of that. But 
But the point here that I'm identifying with this story is that he was embarrassed. He was ashamed of what he had done. And, and, and he thought that I was extremely mad at him and upset. But I was just thankful that he was alive. I was thankful that he still wasn't locked up. I was thankful that the Lord had a little bit of favor on him to allow him to be able to make it back home. And sometimes we don't get that. Right. Amen. You know, we don't, we you know, we see our, our fellow brothers, sisters, family members, friends, and, and we see things happening to their families, and 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 they don't get that. They don't they don't understand the favor of somebody in your family being saved. And it's important. And so, you know, I just identify with that story a little bit because it just amazes me how how his pride wouldn't allow him to want to even talk to me in that situation because he thought I would be upset. But in the end, it was just, come here, son, I'm just happy to see you. Amen. Very good uh, example, a great example of how a father did not like his son's decision, but he didn't turn his back on him. Right. And, you know, we keep relating to this subject. It's like, God, that's what, he's not pleased with decisions we make, but he won't turn his back on us. We just have to come. And so as we close out this Sunday school lesson, uh, let me read the practical points. And then I ask everyone to start preparing themselves for the offertory. Uh, first one, it says, uh, a Florence absent spiritual discernment often leads to a squandering of it all. Luke 15, 11 through 13. The world is a cruel place to those who have foolishly lost everything, verses 14 through 16. Sometimes we have to hit bottom before we wise up, verse 17. We try to begin with God, bargain with God. He wants to show us his grace, verses 18 through 20. And <clears throat> we really are not worthy to be called God's children. Thankfully, Thankfully, it does not depend on that verses 21 through 22. And we should join heaven in celebrating every time a lost sinner is found. Amen. And we ask that, uh, we ask uh, Deacon Cunningham, could he help us with the offering? He's right near down. We ask that everyone that can uh, at least give at least $5 we also ask that you support our scholarship fund. And as I said, the only qualifications are that you attend Sunday school three consecutive Sundays in a row. That way you'll be able to, pastor will be able to sign off on you. Amen. Everybody ought to go to Sunday school, Sunday school, Sunday school. Everybody ought to go to Sunday school. Every Sunday morning, everybody ought to go to Sunday school, Sunday school, Sunday school. Everybody ought to go to Sunday school every Sunday morning. Who? The men, the women, and the boys, and the girls. Every Sunday morning. Amen. Where's that? If, Everyone's satisfied with the giving. We're going to ask that all stand and <coughs> remain standing. And as Deacon uh, Cunningham bless the offering. Father God, God, we thank you for the Sunday school class on this morning, Lord. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy. We ask you to bless this offering that we have received. We ask you to bless the